Now, we started off in John chapter 3, because this is one of the best passages in the entire Bible that is, that is just great for soul winning. And the part that I want to focus in on in John chapter 3 is the very beginning of the passage where Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus and he explains to him about being born again. And hopefully this is something that you explain to people that get saved at the door. I know there's different ways of explaining the gospel. Um, you know, you could use lots of different illustrations. This is one of the illustrations that I like to use. It's a very biblical phrase. A lot of people are familiar with the term of being a born again Christian and help explain what that means to be a born again Christian. Look at what Jesus says here in, uh, in verse number three. The Bible says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So Jesus says, in order to be saved, in order to go to heaven, in order to see the kingdom of God, you have to be born again. Nicodemus doesn't understand this, of course. In verse number four, he answers them and says, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? He's, his mind is thinking physical. So when Jesus says you have to be born again, he's like, how is that even possible? I'm way too big. I'm way too old to be able to go back inside my mom's womb and come back out again and, and have a second birth. He's like, this doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. So then Jesus explains in verse number five, he answers him again. Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So he's talking about a spiritual birth. So in order to be born again, now everybody is born one time. We all have one birth. That's the flesh birth. That's the physical birth. That is the born of water birth. And I don't want to get too deep into the false doctrine of this, but there are some people that will teach, oh no, you have to be baptized. Talk about this. this is not talking about baptism. Okay. Jesus said that which is born of flesh is flesh. Right after he said, a man be born of water and of the spirit. There are two different things. Being born of water is one thing. Being born of the spirit is another. Being born of water is flesh. Being born of the spirit is spirit. Being born of water is what happens when a woman's water breaks and the child comes out. Usually that happens, you know, I mean, it happens right away. In most cases, when a woman's water breaks, watch out, because here's coming the baby. Oftentimes, the baby's coming out when the water breaks. Like simultaneously, as, as the, the baby is coming out and, and being pushed out, the water often will break at that same time. So he's referring to being born of water being your physical birth. Everyone has one of those. Everyone has one birth. The second birth is the birth of the Spirit. Now, I like to focus on this because this is extremely important, just understanding salvation, what it means, how, you know, once you're born into a family, you are a part of that family no matter what. Your children, the family that you were born into, nothing can change. Now, we're talking about the physical birth. When you are physically born into a family, no one can change who your father is. No one can change who your mother is. Now, you may have step parents. You may have other people that come in and help and try to raise you and try to support you or whatever and, and are involved in your life. But nobody can change who your father is and who your mother is. Those things do not change. They cannot change. You have DNA that is part of your blood. It's part of your flesh that does not change. And in like fashion, the spiritual birth follows the same pro uh, properties or principles that spiritually, once your spirit is born, once it's born of God, once you receive the seed, which is the word of God that conceives in your heart, that brings forth life, that new life is born of the spirit and you enter into God's family, you become a child of God. Just as physically, when you're born, you become a child of your parents, your physical mother and father. When you are born again, when your spirit is born, you are born of God. You become a child of God. That's why in John chapter one, the Bible says, but as many as received him, referring to Jesus Christ, but as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So once you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you believe on the name of Jesus Christ, you are born again. That starts the new birth. You are a new creature. You have a new life 
at that moment.